Why hello there anxious cynic back again with another Minimator video. So as many of you probably already know, a recent update to Minimator came out, version 1.10. And I wanted to do a video on it sooner, but I was actually sick with a cold. And I also wanted to wait until some of the known bugs were fixed. And today, as of this recording, it's going to be a few days before this video comes out. But as of today, an update to the pre-release, i.e. not the full version, it hasn't officially released yet has come out with a few of the bug fixes and I thought it would be time to take a look at the update to Minimator and as you can see on your screen, that's what we're looking at. So just to give you a brief overview of what has changed in this version is they've improved the workbench and specialized settings for each character or blocks, which includes gender to humans and things like that. We'll go over that in a second over here in the workbench. They've also updated the scenery import feature for terrain where you'll have timelines for animatable blocks and whatnot. And related to that is bright blocks like lava or fire or torches and things like that will now come into the program as you can see in the graphic settings here when i drop that down you have a glowing block brightness so certain things will come in with predetermined settings that uh once were not possible so let's go ahead and take a look through the program and see what's different and what's the same and whatnot as you can see it pretty much looks the same i've gone ahead and updated a couple of things for myself but this is pretty much as usual same here at least for now because it's empty so we'll just go on over here all of these things if you're familiar with Minimator, then you already know what all that is and uh, let's just go ahead and do what we already know to be a couple of the new features so one thing here is if you bring up this you have zombie human all the usual stuff but here you have variant i can click on that and i can make it an alex character go to zombie you have variant so you have zombie husk and stuff like that i think if you go to the villager here you'll probably have villager and then you have all the different variants of the different types of villagers things like that which is pretty dang old awesome because these were things you'd have to try to find hurdles you know you'd have to get over trying to figure out what's what and whatnot so uh it looks like when you click on this to sort it doesn't go back to the original sorting maybe if you click away from it Oh, that's interesting. It just, it kind of stays with one of these sorting modes. It doesn't go back to the original. I don't know if you would consider that a bug, but yeah, that's, uh, that's something. Just discovered now. Anyway, let's go ahead and bring in, uh, let's go to the search here. We'll bring in Steve. Oh, nope. Oh man, look at me. Human. There we go. Bring him in. So one thing that was often requested in the previous versions of Minimator is now a reality. As you can see here, we have the character selected, just the root of the character, nothing else. And with that selected, you have a custom rotation point feature now. So yeah, let me uh, double check something real quick. Let's go into our settings. Let's look at these real fast before we get into this. All of this is pretty much the same as far as I know. Interface, all of this is pretty much the same. Of course, you can change the color of things. Z is up. That's one thing I always like to have. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Make the Z is up. Otherwise it would be Y. And I don't dig that. All right. So we've already kind of looked at this. The block brightness thing. And we also have water lava animation. All of that on by default as far as I understand. All of this is good here. All of our render settings are pretty much where we want them to be. And yeah. All right. So now that we've got Z is up. This should be more intuitive to me. If not for you, then you know what you need to do. Anyway, uh, let's go ahead and click custom rotation point. I think I just spit on my monitor when I said that because I'm so excited about it. Oh, anyway, with this selected, we can do like this. And oh my God, look at that, man. Custom rotation point for Steve. You don't have to use a folder or anything. Oh, such a nice feature to have, dude. Look at that. Let's actually make it 15, maybe something like that. Bring this up 15 points. Boom, and there's your custom rotation point. No more finagling with folders or anything like you would normally have to do, like doing that and having to move stuff around and whatnot. Let's undo that. Um, that's pretty awesome, I'm gonna have to say. Look at that, just that easy, and there's your custom rotation point. No crazy finagling or anything. Can't get over it, sorry. All right, so now that we've got that out of the way, let's go ahead and check out some of the other features. Let's see if this works with some of the pre-made terrain. We're gonna go into 
scenery. There we go, I got the word out. We're gonna go over here, we're gonna click on browse. And let's see, bring in a building. I feel like maybe a building would be a good one to try out. Uh, let's just go to mansion, I don't know. There we go, create that. There's Steve. And as you can see here, if you had a previous project in Minimator, previous versions anyway, uh, then this would be a problem. If you had doors on it or chests or anything, you wouldn't be able to animate them. But as far as I understand, click on that and there you go, man. The new version, animatable doors. You don't have to go in and remove them or do any kind of craziness to get things sorted out where you can begin your animating endeavors you can just go ahead and make your maps in minecraft or whatever and bring them in look at that dude even the dig hold lever is good to go and ready to animate so that definitely will save a lot of effort and time because as you may know before you would have to build scenery or get scenery and remove the doors and then put them back in place in minimator and whatnot so this should definitely save a lot of people a lot of problems, a lot of trouble. Uh, okay, so we've got some torches and we have some glowstone. So let's see what happens if we take our background. Bring on down the, the light there. So as you can see, these blocks are staying bright, which is technically what you would want them to do. Let's turn on rendering real quick. And everything seems to be about the same. Let's see here, the torches are the same. So you will notice if we, uh, let me see, let's bring in a camera. And if I could see, I can't see. Let me turn off the lighting for this for a moment. There we go. Now I can sort of see. All right, let's select the camera. Come on, dude. Select it, there we go. All right, so that is selected and you, there is no longer a uh, bloom or glare, glow, whatever you want to call it feature. Uh, so that was a thing to do with the community build and that mod is no longer in play anymore as you may have seen according to the forums or the Minimator Discord the community build has been discontinued at this point and the bloom feature is no longer a thing I don't know if it will be introduced in some other way in the future or anything like that but for now it is rest in peace to the bloom feature as far as I know anyway one thing you will notice down here is the camera size though. So right now it's set to use project settings. So that's something to keep in mind if you're animating or setting up your project before this was the only way to determine what the uh, the project setting was for the resolution of the project. But now you have it here in the camera feed so you can actually adjust that here. Now, as far as what that affects in terms of when you go to render, I'm not sure. I haven't experimented with it yet, but that's another new change to the new update of Minimator. So there's that. Uh, anyway, you got these bright blocks, which is pretty nifty. You don't have to worry about doing that anymore, which is convenient. You got all that going for you, and that's pretty good. All right, so I think that's it for the main updates to the new version of Minimator. Let me bring this up real quick. There's one other thing. As you can see here, we have all of these uh, different timelines down here once you bring in scenery and they're automatically you know parented they're under the scenery uh root as you might say and now you can have chests didn't see those earlier but you have chests that you can animate now uh and i think they are yes they are the special block chests where you can actually open them and whatnot so all of that is there set up and good to go and i'm pretty sure for the the most part that covers all of the scenery based updates at least the most important ones that i'm aware of and the main other thing, one more thing we're going to try to cover here, let's go ahead and kind of clear out our scene a bit, is this one right here, man. See this create piece of text? I'm sure you're familiar with this, and you have a 3D option now. Let's go ahead and create it. I want to I want to savor this, all right? So we're going to go ahead and select this text, bring it out a little bit, take a look at it, and as you may know, you should be fully well aware that this is what text looks like in Minimator, and you can get, you know, custom fonts and things like that. But what if you wanted it to be 3D? Well, you used to have to do all kinds of stuff like create images and bring them in. I have tutorials on that. I'm sure most of you, if you're on my channel, are well aware of. But now you have this 3D function. So instead of having to do all those other steps, you tick this and there you go. 3D text right within Minimator 
No, uh, no glitchiness of the edges or anything like that with the anti-aliasing or any of that stuff. If you're familiar with it, then you know what I'm talking about. It's just good to go right out of the program. Just go ahead and give it a quick color right quick and turn on rendering so that way you can see that 3D-ness a little bit better. Come over here to the scale. We're going to click this to drop down the individual parameters. And then you can do like this. You can make it deeper. Of course, you can... You know, scale the text as you normally would and all this kind of stuff. But look at that, dude. Just that quick and easy 3D text right within Monimator. Another long-awaited feature that is uh, pretty exciting. So glad that they decided to put that in there and whatnot. David and uh, Nimi and whatnot doing all the, the good work here. I wanted to give credit where credit is due. Hopefully I'm not forgetting anything. Anyway, so yeah, there you go. All right, and the final thing we're going to look at in regards to this 3D text and the update to Monimator 1.1.0 is the ability to animate the text. Now, if you watch my subtitle tutorial that I did some time ago, you'll notice that I mentioned you can't keyframe text, unfortunately, so you had to do all this other finagling and whatnot. Well, now they thought of everything and added the ability to keyframe text right within Monimator. And as you can see here with our text selected on the options and parameters and all these good things, I'm gonna go ahead and shrink that up. You have text down here now. So if I drop that down, then you'll see that we have this and we also have the font we can control right here and everything else, which is pretty dang old awesome. So I'm gonna have the timeline. I'm gonna bring it over here. Let's say to 15 frames, which at my 30 frame tempo should be half a second in length. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and type is and kill like that. And there you go. Look at that. You can keyframe text now, make it awesome. You can do your subtitles or whatever it is you want to do right there within Monimator. No craziness involved, no finagling, no fighting with the program. It's all right there. And I can see so many good uses for all of these updates, man. It's gonna streamline the process of animating and doing some of these things that are pretty basic, but used to be quite an ordeal to do in Minimator and just whittle them all down into a convenient little, you know, just a feature, just something you can do and slap together right in Minimator. And it's just awesome. So uh, anyway, that's it. That's most of the major updates that I am aware of right now. If I miss anything you guys want me to cover, then uh, feel free to chime in in the comments and let me know. I do plan to do like a, a revamped complete beginner's guide series on the new version. I'm not sure if I'll do it on the pre-release or I'll wait until it's fully released. We'll see kind of, you know, how the updates go in the near future. But yeah, that's going to be it. So as always, guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for supporting the channel and whatnot. If you want to help me to keep doing this, feel free to hit that like button comment subscribe to the channel share the videos with your friends and your families and your pets and that's gonna be it for me guys so thanks for watching and i'll see you guys in the next video